Welcome back everybody to another box set review. So uh, today we're going to be looking at one that I actually uh, watched in its entirety before buying purely because I hadn't seen much from the leading star and uh, nothing from the uh, sole director of six of the films in this box set. So uh, yeah, but regardless it's been a, a box set that I thoroughly enjoyed getting myself through as I enjoyed all of the films, some to a lesser extent than others but still enjoyed all of them and uh, yeah for a bunch of films that generally are outside of the kind of genres that I'm typically uh, fond of were engrossing and enjoyable so uh, yeah it's the uh, Marlena Dietrich and Joseph von Sternberg uh, at Paramount between 1930 and 1935 so uh, yeah uh, both Dietrich and Sternberg made seven films between them each with each other uh, between that time this has six this box set has six of those films the only one it doesn't have is from 1930s uh, the blue angel which i've still yet to see but i've heard a great many things about so uh yeah let's look at the films that are in this box set though and the first of which is morocco which is uh yeah the one film in this box set that isn't a uh, leading star with marlena dietrich he was billed below gary cooper but that's the only case for this entire box set and uh, yeah, this was released in 1930, clocks in at 92 minutes long. And uh, yeah, it's the weakest out of the box set as far as I'm concerned, even though I think it got the more critical acclaim at the time. But yeah, really nicely done, for, like usual with indicator films. And uh, yeah, it's a romantic drama, so maybe that's why it's not wholly on my side. But yeah, the two leads are really good together. And uh, yeah, Molly Nadeatrich certainly makes a giant impression uh, for the first film in this box set. And the next one is from 1931 and it is Dishonoured, clocking in at 91 minutes long, so slightly shorter than the previous one, on by the way all of these films are in black and white. And uh, yeah, Marlene Dietrich does have the, the uh, top billing on this one. And uh, yeah, this is my favourite of the box set, probably because it's not only a romantic drama, but it's got spy elements to it. It's set during World War One during in 1915. So uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Definitely my favourite of the lot. And uh, yeah, also they've got the, one of the darker endings in this uh, box set as well. Really rather a brutal one as well. Not one I was expecting to happen. It's certainly not something you'd likely to see uh, nowadays, that's for sure. But yeah, fantastic film. And uh, yeah, really good pair of leads again. And uh, yeah, highly engrossing plot throughout. Then we have uh, another film that is set during a wartime. And that is Shanghai Express. Set during a uh, Chinese civil war. And uh, yeah, Marlena Dietrich is once again fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's also got a good performance from Clive Brook. And uh, yeah, it's basically a romantic drama again, but with some more, uh, with some tense uh, war uh, elements to it. Nothing like spectacular in terms of action or anything like that. But uh, yeah, suspicions do uh, get raised on certain people. And, uh, and uh, considering Marlena Dietrich's character's uh, love interest in this is a, a, a captain, I think. He's a... Uh, yeah, definitely one that's going to come into the line of fire in some regards. And uh, yeah, it's about the past loves uh, coming back into the present and uh, regaining that love that you once had to one another. And uh, as you can see, that it's stated there on the back, she loved him once before. Lived, loved, she loved him before, she became notorious and regain, regains him afterwards. So uh, yeah, really nicely done. Not as good as the previous one, but definitely better than Morocco. Definitely has a more... Um, engaging a romance to it and a more believable romance as well and uh, yeah that was released in 1932 and clocks in at 82 minutes long so quite a bit shorter than the previous two and uh, then in 1932 also we have blonde venus now this is the only one out of the six where marlena Dietrich plays a mother uh, as you can see she's got a child there and uh, yeah it's also got a early performance from carrie grant and he's really rather good in this, even at a uh, young age. And uh, yeah, she basically plays a mother who has to go back into the cabaret scene to earn money for her husband who has become ill. He has to go abroad to uh, get the uh, treatment. And while he is abroad, she ends up falling for Cary Grant. Husband finds out when he comes back and she ends up going on the run with her kids so she doesn't lose him. Uh, I won't spoil the rest of it, but yeah, it's a superb film. Uh, probably my uh, second favourite out of the lot. And again, really nice artwork on the inside as well. And uh, yeah, that's a 94 minutes long, like I said, also from 1932. So that's, uh, yeah, the longest of the ones so far that we've looked at. But the absolute longest one is from 1934, 
clocking in at 104 minutes, and it is the Scarlet Empress. Now, this uh, charts the rise of Catherine the Great, who became the uh, Queen of uh, France. Uh, no, Russia, sorry. I don't know why I said France. Uh, but yeah, it's a really good film. Really solid romantic period drama kind of aspect to it. Because it's got absolutely uh, gorgeous uh, sets and costumes, as exemplified by here. And uh, yeah, really lavish film. Not one that I think was a hit. I think it cost about $900,000 in 1934, which is a huge amount of money. But these kind of films I don't think were all that popular and uh, I don't think it was a hit at the time. But yeah, still a, uh, an ambitious film and one that I really rather enjoyed as well. And uh, yeah, definitely the uh, one that is the um, more um, different one to the others because, like I said, it's set during... Uh, well, I didn't say that actually. But it's set during the 18th century basically, whereas all the rest are set in the early 20th century, either at the time that they were released or a little bit earlier. So uh, yeah, definitely sets it apart by uh, being in that kind of era. And finally, from 1935, the shortest of the lot, 79 minutes long, is The Devil is a Woman. Now, this is a culmination of the uh, previous films between Dietrich and Sternberg, because it's, once again, about a woman uh, who has uh, uh, love interests, but unlike previous ones, where she's, you know, either innocent or at least just wanting to fall in love, in this one, she has every man wrapped around her finger to the point that they will be... Uh, either become penniless or dead just to be with her and uh, yeah she is really rather a cold calculating character in this but she does have a little bit of redemption at some point in the film and uh, yeah really gorgeous artwork again uh, although being the shortest it doesn't quite have enough uh, characterization for me I would like it to have been a little bit longer just to uh, flesh out the uh, the characters but it's really nicely told especially the first act which is told in like flashback narration and it's done really, really nicely. And as per usual with these indicator releases, you get a really nice booklet there. There's Marlene Dietrich. I think that's... I can't remember. Uh, yeah, that's Shanghai Express, that is. I just remember them by seeing that she was on the train. And uh, there's Sternberg and her as well. And uh, yeah, goes through all of the films. Tells you about the cast and crew on all of the films as well, which itself takes up a fair few pages. And it's got posters and stuff, uh, detailing different stuff. Apparently there was supposed to be a film called Hurricane with her in it as well, but apparently it didn't get released, that's what I was just reading. Mm, that's interesting. So yeah, it's got interesting stuff like that in it basically, so uh, yeah. Stuff that you might well not have uh, known or um, been able to read up about elsewhere. There they are before they started uh, collaborating with each other in 1928, so two years before um, the Blue Angel and uh, Morocco. So, uh, yeah, they were clearly uh, fond of each other before then. And, uh, yeah, it's a really, really fantastic little booklet, this. It's got her in her costumes. Uh, this one here is um, from uh, Blonde Venus, I think. So, uh, yeah, really fantastic booklet there and as per usual really nice hard box set really nothing that's going to give way easily which is always nice to see and uh, yeah again you get a wrap around on it so it's got all of the films on the front there it's got a quote from Marlene Dietrich there Joseph von Sternberg was an unparalleled genius and because given he did six films in a row not a single one of them being a bad film is kind of you know indicative of that and if I see Blue Angel and end up enjoying that, then that'll be seven films in a row. And uh, yeah, limited edition box set. Only 6,000 were made. And this is 2,936. So uh, yeah, I don't think these have sold particularly well because I don't think Marley and Adich, which is uh, older films, are particularly popular. And if they are, then uh, yeah, this is hardly the cheapest of box sets. I found it for £42.94, uh, which is about £17 cheaper than what it was going elsewhere. But that was only because it was on eBay. So, uh, yeah, it's normally about £60, which is quite a lot. But £42 was, uh, yeah, fairly cheap for a uh, six film. Six films that I did enjoy as well. So, yeah, this is the ninth box set that I have from uh, Indicator after the two Ray Harryhausen volumes, the William Castle first box set, the Fuller box set, and the three... Um, oh, no, it's eighth. Eighth, eighth, eighth. Uh, and then the three Columbia Noir film, uh, box sets, I was including the fourth Columbia Noir one, even though that we have not obviously got that yet. That is out in a week's time, I think. So, uh, yeah, regardless, uh, yeah, fantastic box set. 
highly recommend uh, seeking these out because these do seem to be fairly underrated in terms of you know early 30s uh, films and uh, yeah but obviously if you're not sure about whether or not you're going to enjoy them or not then uh, yeah find them online or rent them or something like that because uh, yeah they are worth watching and uh, yeah if you like your romantic dramas then they should hopefully tick that box for you nonetheless thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye